So, uh, good afternoon to all participants. Uh, welcome to our lecture about development, challenge, and opportunities of towns. Thank you for joining us on this Saturday. Uh, I understand that you have, want to have some time with your family, but I hope it will be interesting for all of you. So, let me introduce myself first and my colleague. Uh, my name is Medina. I'm uh, working for the University of Central Asia at the Research Fellow at the Institute of Public Policy Administration. And um, actually, I could complete this study thanks uh, to my colleague, uh, Aigul uh, Beymisheva, and uh, she will introduce herself. So, please, Aigul, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Aigul. My surname is Bey Misheva. Uh, I'm a teacher of Narcos University and research all of type all type of urban studies, urban processes, and urban challenges. Of course. Thank you. Good. Um, mainly, I will present today, and. Uh, Aigul uh, will help me with the discussion and also at the end of my presentation, in case I miss something, I hope she will uh, add some points because our study was pretty large and uh, soon you will be able to read it uh, uh, the chapter, uh, the book chapter. Uh, we submitted already it and it's accepted. We have to wait until it's published and so it's pretty large. So we tried to really focus on some main points. And if I forget to mention something, then I hope my uh, colleague Aigul will include some uh, useful comments. Okay, so um, let me share my screen first. Good, so uh, since 2012, uh, the government of Kazakhstan uh, has adopted uh, policies and allocated considerable budget uh, transfers to the development of towns. And the purpose of our study is to provide a critical review of the Kazakhstan monotown policy and to propose change needed if the government really wants uh, monotowns to find their own sustainable economic development path. Um, as all of you know, uh, the strategy Kazakhstan 2050 proposed by our former president states that uh, by 2050, the country aims to join 30 uh, countries designated as developed and wanted to increase the share of urban population to 70%. And uh, I was happy to be a part of OCD team. Uh, Organization for Economic uh, and Cooperation and Development. Uh, they invite me to, to join their team uh, that worked on uh, urban policy review uh, for the Ministry of National Economy. And they were uh, a little bit surprised uh, that the Ministry of National Economy want them to suggest how to use Almaty, Nur Sultan, Shumken, and Aktubi as drivers of national economy together with the small towns. So they actually wanted uh, us to put together the story of large cities together with the small towns. And uh, in the case of Kazakhstan, we can see, for example, from this map that uh, not only large cities experience uh, the uh, high growth rate, but also some small towns. And in fact, 15% uh, of uh, the 58% uh, of uh, urban population live in these industrial towns. And in case of Kazakhstan, of course, we have to pay attention to these uh, small towns and understand how they can participate in overall national economic growth. Uh, it was to say that uh, we, these all mining towns are part of the Soviet legacy and the location of towns was largely determined by the presence of uh, valuable natural mineral reserves. And during the Soviet times, most of the uh, mining towns were closed to visitors and developed in isolation from surrounding regions. And they were supervised directly by ministries located in Moscow, including Ministry of Defense. And of course, uh, the dwellers were supplied by valuable consumer goods and uh, from Moscow. 
what was interesting also that the population of these mining towns were supplemented uh, by dwellers uh, because of the Soviet forced uh, resettlement policy. And for example, in Kentau and uh, Tur uh, Turkestan region, uh, and also in, uh, there were some districts called uh, Little Athens uh, because of the large number of Greek population. And also uh, there were a lot of Koreans uh, or uh, Russians, uh, Polish and other Slavic ethnics uh, populated uh, towns because of the different circumstances. For example, uh, during the World War II, Japanese prisoners were sent to Tekeli and they participated in construction of the, of the mining plant. So, of course, after, uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, all these new uh, countries, uh, including Kazakhstan, became independent and uh, local industries, they lost uh, their former technological links uh, with Russian and other post-Soviet countries' industries. And it was a difficult time uh, because the Kazakh mining industries uh, lost their main consumers and had to find new markets to sell their products. Uh, in some towns, uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union occurred simultaneously with uh, inevitable uh, mine exhaustion. Uh, for example, in, in Tekeli, uh, uh, up to 75% of the lead deposit uh, was exhausted uh, already in the 90s. And so uh, the, the plant completely shut down in 1996. Uh, also, uh, in, in case of the Kazakhstan, uh, there was uh, a time when the new uh, public administration system was formed. And so these newly formed town authorities called Akimats uh, had to manage uh, the small towns, but they were very weak and they continued to depend mainly on this uh, local industry and top down orders of the regional and national government. And uh, there was a, a privatization process and uh, municipality utility networks uh, that formerly managed by uh, industries were partly uh, privatized, uh, partly transferred to the uh, supervision of town industries. In some cases, uh, the local industries um, were, uh, uh, the, the, the owners of these local industries became foreign companies uh, and um, you know, not all infrastructure went to under the supervision of the town authorities. So, in case of uh, some modern towns like Crop Town and Aktebe region, uh, the mining company still owns and manages municipal utility network in most of the town districts. Uh, but not all residents have access to uh, communal, communal services. So uh, to some extent, we can say that uh, privatization of the municipal infrastructure in mining town has negatively, uh, negatively impacted uh, the maintenance of uh, utility networks and led to the fast degradation of housing. Uh, for example, uh, in Rudney, uh, depreciation of water and uh, uh, sewer networks uh, reached uh, around 60% uh, in uh, 2018. Uh, of course, uh, you can understand the uh, decline of the local industries uh, and uh, overall deterioration of the living conditions uh, led to the active outflow of uh, population. And also partly because the population in the Soviet time was moved to these uh, uh, monotowns forcibly. A lot of people returned to their motherland and they uh, move out uh, of Kazakhstan to different countries. And uh, all this town, they had a lot of uh, great uh, uh, human losses. For example, in 2000, uh, the population of Saran and uh, Shaktings has uh, decreased uh, by uh, 35% and in uh, Karajak and Kar uh, Arkalik, for example, by 34% if we compare with the number of population in 1991. At the same time, some uh, mother towns uh, surrounded by rural areas, they experienced population growth uh, due to migration of residents of neighboring villages uh, attracted by comparatively better developed urban infrastructure uh, of the towns. And as you understand, uh, there will be a big uh, wage uh, difference and uh, average uh, monthly salary in mother towns, uh, of course, uh, 
lower than the average uh, in, this, in the country. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, some uh, towns uh, rich of oil and gas like Aksai and Janosin. There uh, we can find salaries that are higher even than in Almaty and uh, Nur Sultan. But in general, if you look at Saran and Shaktings, uh, the average salary below the uh, $300. And outmigration of young people and qualified specialists occurs in response to decline of the not only mining industry, but also because of the few alternative employment opportunities and low, uh, as I said, low wages. And uh, we also, uh, with Igul, we discovered that the population is aging. So on average, uh, more than 10% of the population of monotones are reti retirees. So they already retired and occupy, they are located in some special retirement centers. Uh, and uh, people between 18 and uh, 30 age uh, comprise less than 30% of the monotone population. So uh, we can say uh, also what we observed that uh, the self-employment is really well developed in these towns. Uh, and its main uh, uh, source of income for residents of towns. In 40% of towns, the self-employment rate is higher than in other urban areas of Kazakhstan. Uh, and self-employment in many cases uh, related to working in the informal economic sectors and does not uh, enable people to benefit from labor regulation and social security policies. And compared to other urban areas, uh, towns uh, generally have a relatively small number of residents with higher level of education. Of course, uh, most of the universities in Kazakhstan are based in large cities. University students often do not return to towns after graduation due to the lack of well-paid job opportunities. And um, it's natural that they're leaving their towns after uh, they get their higher education. Uh, of course, since 2000, the government has tried to fill uh, these towns with human capital by implementing different programs like uh, going back with diplomas to the village and by uh, settling ethnic, ethnic uh, repatriates to mining towns. But even these newcomers, uh, they experience a lot of challenges uh, to be settled in these towns. Towns were not ready to accept them. Uh, for the uh, ethnic uh, repatriates, it was necessary to get permission from uh, the previous owners if they wanted to occupy abandoned homes. Uh, also, uh, many repatriates co couldn't uh, uh, buy or couldn't uh, rent apartment. They couldn't get local registration and were unable to find, um, uh, you know, uh, access to most of the local services and also, as well as employment. So uh, town authorities were not ready to uh, create uh, favorable conditions for these newcomers uh, that they become a part, a residents of these towns. And many of the young people who returned to their towns, they uh, left them after a while. And uh, it means that this was not a good implementation of the, um, of the national program. Uh, for many years, uh, development of monotowns was uh, primarily associated with the industry. So the government supported uh, town by investing in industry modernization. Uh, it started from the strategy of industrial innovative development in uh, 2003. Then there was fast industrial innovative development uh, program and industrialization map. Uh, and of course, some industries began technological updates which was good, but uh, modernization led to considerable decrease in workforce and salaries. And the situation worsened in 2009 after the global economic crisis, a decrease in the global market price of oil and gas. So uh, the government tried actually to subsidize uh, industry, but it did not really uh, achieve, uh, succeed in uh, creating better conditions in towns. So as we all know, in 2011, industrial workers in general was there not satisfied with their salaries and living conditions went on a strike. That led to the violent conflict uh, uh, with the town authority and police leading to the deaths of uh, people. 
And to react to this incident in uh, Janosian, uh, national government approved the first monotone policy program. And monotone policy program identified 27 monotones or towns with at least one or a few enterprises belonging to the same industry responsible for employment of 20% of the population on overall industrial output. What was interesting about this program that uh, the national uh, government uh, categorized smaller towns uh, by the economic potential. And surprisingly, there were only two uh, towns, Janathas and Arkalik, that were categorized as uh, having a low economic potential. The Monotone program aimed to assist monotones to tackle with economic development problems by first increasing the efficiency of the main operating industry, supporting economic diversification and small and medium entrepreneurship, uh, stimulating labor mobility, developing social and engineering infrastructure. But when we reviewed with a goal all these monotone uh, programs, we actually uh, find out that uh, when it comes to implementation, uh, only two objectives were implemented. Mainly it was about increasing efficiency of operating industry and a lot of activities were around industries and also about uh, developing engineering infrastructure. Whereas objectives like uh, economic diversification, uh, support SMEs, and stimulating labor mobility, as well as developing social infrastructure, these objectives uh, were not well touched and, of course, were not well implemented. So, of course, uh, the positive thing was that uh, all the towns uh, identified as the Mona towns, they, uh, they, attract, they had a chance to attract a public investment from the national budget uh, because uh, they uh, had a, a special status, uh, but the Ministry of National Economy proposed a special uh, unified methodology for assessment of these um, uh, local plans. And uh, what we can see that uh, actually uh, the single approach to so different, uh, so uh, wide range of towns did not help them to come up with a sustainable and reliable local economic strategies. Uh, in 2014, a uh, monotone program became integral part of the regional development program 2020. In fact, the, what the government did, uh, they merged uh, the monotone program with other ongoing development programs, including modernization of housing and utility. Uh, the drinking water supply program called Agbulak and affordable housing program. And what was pro uh, problematic that uh, there was no synergy created that uh, for adequate uh, coherence between these different programs. And uh, in fact, this new regional development program introduced certain conflicting situation, uh, centralization and decentralization efforts. Uh, because it aimed both uh, supporting uh, large urban agglomerations by attracting human capital from monotones, but it continued also investing in monotones development to stem them from outflow of their population. So it was not clear if this regional development uh, program uh, aims spatial centralization or spatial decentralization. A uh, monitor program actually supplied uh, town authorities with a new uh, local planning tool. Uh, it was called a comprehensive development plan. So every uh, monotown mono authority had to develop its own comprehensive development plan uh, with estimation of public investments required to upgrade local urban infrastructure, roads, municipality networks, housing, and information about local investment projects. Uh, town authorities had to propose investment projects supported by the main industries operating in the towns. Uh, they were also called anchor projects uh, that were included in the national industrialization map. Some other towns with uh, operating industries were able to engage industry in the town's development. A good example is Janatas. A uh, town authority benefited from a foreign investor the Russian company Euro, uh, Eurocham uh, launched a chemical complex uh, with the 
a capacity to produce 1 million tons of fertilizers using deposits from the uh, phosphorite basin in the Karatau. And the Yevrohim in, engaged in uh, urban development by ordering a town development master plan. Our colleagues uh, from Germany, they assisted to develop this master plan and we had a chance to interview them also. And the financial support of uh, Euro, uh, this uh, Russian company, Euro, uh, came, allowed the town to demolish old uh, multi-story apartments and also renovate most of its aging housing stock. But there were also some other towns uh, that could attract uh, both public and private investment. For example, Zaryanovsk and Kurchatovsk and Reiter authorities, um, they couldn't uh, attract foreign investment. And uh, the main reason was the shortage of qualified specialists. As all we know that if we would like to uh, change uh, the technological process of production, we need to apply high technologies and we need uh, highly qualified engineers that are absent in small towns. Uh, the Ministry of National Economy uh, strongly suggested all, all the money towns authorities to follow a single methodology, as I said. But uh, what was problematic, they also had a unified list of objectives and target indicators. Uh, if you see here, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't translate it into English, but uh, most of the indicators uh, 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 talk about, um, you know, overall uh, development uh, and town authorities could not really propose any location specific uh, development objectives that could be useful for uh, mobilization of the town's unique location specific advantage. For example, there was a shortage of qualified indicators allowing to understand the quality of living uh, from uh, town residents perspective. Uh, the selected social indicators did not provide any evidence about the satisfaction of the city uh, residents with the quality of locally obtained uh, public services. Uh, none of the selected economic and infrastructure development indicators could be useful for uh, to, to assess uh, local conditions for doing business. And despite uh, the critical ecological situation in towns, important indicators aiming to measure the level of air, water, and soil pollution were absent. Uh, what was also important uh, that uh, monotone authorities uh, distributed grants to prosperous new business projects and provided special training. Uh, however, uh, local businesses uh, uh, from money towns, they complained about the inability to qualify for the loans due to the lack of collateral credit amounts uh, too low to establish secure business and argued that the people responsible for training and consultations were not well qualified to provide adequate skills and advice. The national government did not introduce adequate instructions on how uh, town authorities should engage uh, local private and public actors and population in the planning of the town's future. Uh, local entrepreneurs and industry representatives of many modern towns complained that uh, local investment projects were not publicly discussed. The government wanted uh, town authorities to regulate local market rules by pushing local industry uh, to order goods and services from the local businesses. But most of the industries refused to channel orders to local companies. The industry representatives complained about the low quality of local goods and services. And constrained by centralized public procurement system rules, even town authorities themselves could not even tailor their own public orders to local producers. The town authorities are at the part of the lowest level of the public administration have been uh, unable to deal with serious economic and environmental problems. Town authorities obtained subsidies to build new infrastructure, but they did not rece receive uh, adequate annual uh, budget allocations for its uh, maintenance. So now we are coming to the interesting situation. Uh, we have a, a old uh, fashioned uh, subsidized development constrained by centralized decision making and uh, lacking regulatory and taxation power, as well as adequate uh, managerial capacity, town authorities could not engage with local businesses or motivate local industries and local population to participate in diversification of local economic development. And this is interesting, and this uh, picture 
from whom we have to ask about the future of uh, our towns, from people who are sitting in, uh, in Nur Sultan or from people who is living in these towns, like this girl living in Tekli. <laughs> Uh, so if we look, uh, uh, go uh, slowly to the lessons learned, we can see that uh, the planning that is more aligned to specific town development needs can improve the implementation of uh, nationally established actions to support minor towns. But uh, look at this uh, overall system of uh, physical and social economic planning in Kazakhstan and you can see that towns, they belong to the lowest level of public administration and they even don't have their own budget. Uh, Minister of National Economy continued to promise that there will be a, a fourth level budget, that towns will uh, get their own budget and get opportunity to uh, collect their own taxes. But uh, reality right now show that there is no uh, power uh, for uh, that local authorities and the town authorities, they do not have a, any decision making power or uh, fiscal uh, resources. Uh, the existence of town development plans that they were delegated, it's not enough if town authorities do not have uh, access to local resources that are required to implement this plan successfully. So town authorities should be incentivized to improve local living conditions and uh, accumulate the local assets and uh, to sustain the benefits from the national transfers. Also, town authorities should have adequate incentive to be interested in creation of some favorable uh, business environment, economic conditions and opportunities to generate local revenue uh, taxes for a reinvestment into the town development. However, it's also clear that uh, the fiscal decentralization should be strategic. Uh, because uh, this town, they do not have enough economic resources to generate sufficient local revenue to cover all development related expenses. And of course, they will be dependent from the national transfers for a while, but they have to learn how to self survive. Uh, what is important for the future of these towns uh, is to strengthen their capabilities uh, to mobilize locational advantage. And uh, this is an interesting story from Tekli, where I was living for two years, and we tried to engage uh, different level stakeholders. We even hosted a conference uh, in, to, in September 2017, where all this, uh, the town authorities, uh, local population, lo local representatives of private and public sector, they were invited and we tried to come up with a new strategy, a new vision how the town should be developed. And if you can see, we uh, end up uh, this conference by saying that Tekeli should be town for eco-friendly, uh, eco knowledge-based, economically sustainable, local community-based innovative development. And uh, on one of these photos, you can see our campus. Uh, hopefully it will be uh, constructed in Tekeli soon and uh, our uh, School of Professional Continuing Education on the top picture uh, were our um, teachers already building capacity of young residents of the Tekeli town uh, who can be uh, young leaders. Because uh, town authorities, they need to learn how to focus on uh, small scale, feasible and market driven investment projects and they have to listen to their population and we need to help this population to formulate some ideas about how they want to live tomorrow. And the, if the national government wants to facilitate development is in this non-mining, uh, uh, in this post-industrial uh, towns and development of uh, some non-mining businesses, it is important to strengthen to strengthen the abilities of town authorities to identify and exploit their locational advantage. Uh, we, we understand that uh, the success of local plan depends on how well it represents the long-term development vision of the community, not uh, people in uh, Astana or not people in Taldekorkan. The government should replace the resettlement of repatriates with some uh, better policies uh, that attract young talents for example, we, uh, the government can combine urbanization and uh, digitalization policy plans and facilitate uh, development of uh, digital walking spaces uh, in towns for young dwellers so that they can uh, be employed uh, via internet without relocating. 
Uh, now we're all in isolation, sitting at our homes, and I think uh, it's more, uh, we, we are in a better condition because we have access to internet, we can interact, but uh, the dwellers of uh, these mining towns, uh, in many cases, they don't have a high-speed internet and they don't know about uh, opportunities to get job online or to get education online, and we have to help them. And of course, e youth participation in digital employment uh, of uh, towns uh, actually will help uh, to develop this town. And it must be one of the criteria for channeling public investment in these towns. Uh, because uh, the public investment uh, had to go not only to the engineering infrastructure, but also to establish high-speed internet and co-working spaces where people can come and uh, be employed online. And uh, we all know that dig digital tools in hands of young people uh, can bring innovation. It actually can help uh, these towns to be visible in the wider uh, arena uh, to the global community. And uh, towns can benefit uh, from, uh, uh, you know, from tourism development and development of wide range of services. Also, we thought that uh, with our current uh, public administration system, which is top down, it's important to make the towns visible. And if we uh, take an uh, example of Canadian towns, they are also not visible under the provincial level because uh, there is a high centralization on the provincial level. And so it may be useful to learn from uh, Canada and also to create a kind of association of towns uh, like they have in Canada, Federation of Canadian Municipalities, and this town association could stimulate some joint learning development among uh, town authorities and open opportunities for cooperation uh, with similar town authorities uh, worldwide. And the national government uh, can support this national association of towns uh, by creating special fund aimed to distribute development of grants to support uh, the most feasible development plans and non-industrial projects selected uh, by association members uh, in a competitive manner. And this type of competition-based public investment uh, can serve as a good alternative to the current distribution of subsidies and increase the efficiency of national support aimed to uh, make town authorities more innovative, creative, and responsible to their communities. Uh, this is picture done uh, in Tekeli uh, last summer when we visited Tekeli with Aigul. And you see here the small uh, <laughs> uh, co inviting you to Tekeli if you want to have a rest from the noisy cities because uh, the town is abundant. Some part district of the town really abundant. And uh, to conclude, I just want to say that the, the monotone policy is not effective for national economic and social development because government interventions made actually towns even more dependent on industrial development. They became more, even more dependent from the industry. Uh, most Kazakhstani towns play important role in economic development of the country because they are serving mining industry. However, uh, dependence on mining is an, is an obstacle to sustainable development because national resources, uh, the natural resources, we know that they will be over one day and the extraction uh, leads to unavoidable environmental pollution. Therefore, towns must find more sustainable way of development. If the national government continues to try to solve Manatown development challenge by proposing a unified recipe of top-down subsidization of industry-related development only, public money will be wasted and diversification will not be achieved if town authorities remain incapable of uh, implementing ambitious nationally established objectives, the government will lose public trust and will continue to face social protest. Uh, the living conditions in town will remain substantially unchanged and towns will continue to lose human capital, including young talents and active businesses, which will move to larger urban areas offering better living and business conditions. So it would be helpful for the government to return its attention to the fifth objective of the 2050 strategy, which emphasized the need for better governance and democracy at all levels of public administration. 
The strategy 2050 rational use of natural resources, as well as for strengthening local government. To reflect these two important strategic objectives, the government should communicate its policy interventions better with regional and town authorities. Ideally, delegated planning responsibility must include adequate local level decision making powers and access to resources. There is a need to consider some degree of decentralization of power and resources to enable local authorities to be responsible and interested in cooperation with local community, supporting local businesses, and turning national subsidies into a real public investments in long-term sustainable development of our towns. This all from my side. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll just ask uh, Aigul if she wants to add something. Aigul, do you want to add something to my presentation? Maybe I yes, forgot to thank mention. you, Martina. I just want to add, uh, uh, it's, I think it's, 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 it's really ma uh, basic information. Uh, for example, uh, analyzing uh, uh, the original development program, we find more than 100 uh, uh, special projects to renovate uh, monotowns. It's called uh, Anchor Projects. Anchor Projects. And, uh, uh, but basically, um, what all of these, basically, majority of these projects uh, were uh, unsuccessfully because of uh, the purpose of these projects. Uh, most of them uh, purposed to uh, renovate industrial sphere industrial sphere but uh, it was unsuccessful uh, but uh, there are a lot of uh, any other cases any other possibility to develop uh, any mono town for example uh, it's um, uh, some spheres like tourism sphere or hr sphere or in the um, as a civil, um, um, and digitalization and other, but all of this uh, sphere uh, today, it's not so developed. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any questions from uh, people. So do you, if you have any questions, please uh, yes, uh, use the chat or use uh, these questions and answers uh, tool to ask uh, questions from us because we still have some time available. I didn't use all the time. Okay, so I see that one question. So what, what, what is the question? I just, okay, let's wait. Someone is, okay, I just see the question. Okay, they ask us to translate it in Russian. <laughs> Um, we can switch, I think, in Russian. Um, uh, we will uh, maybe uh, deliver a separate, separate public lecture in Russian language. Uh, we just decided to uh, make this uh, lecture in English because uh, we thought that it would be interesting to the international community, like uh, our colleagues from UK and colleagues from other Central Asian countries. Okay, so next time we will, uh, let's plan, I go to have a, a public lecture in Russian language. Thank you very much for yes, your sure. comments. <laughs> if you have questions. Okay, so maybe you just, uh, we just share some uh, insights and wait uh, for questions for five minutes. So I just want to say that on my back, you can see Tekeli. It's a nice view uh, from, the, uh, from the bridge uh, in the summertime. If you want, uh, you can come to Tekeli and enjoy it. Oh, I see a question. What about... Yeah, this is interesting. We actually were very critical to this idea uh, to call a town's monotown and uh, make a list of some towns and uh, this we think uh, is very Soviet type of approach 
uh, you know, a cliche, yeah? to establish a cliche, you're going to be uh, more volatile and you're not going to be more volatile. <laughs> yes, we actually do disagree with this. And uh, if you all know, there is a new regional development policy 2025. Uh, we also uh, made uh, assessment of this policy. Uh, the new idea is to uh, differentiate between towns which locate close to agglomerations, but, uh, and uh, the, the government think that these towns can enjoy benefits of agglomeration. But uh, in 2017, I was in Kentau. If you know, Kentau is not far away from Shimkent, but there is no connection between Kentau and, and Turkestan and Shimkent. So uh, they said that we cannot enjoy benefits of uh, being uh, close to Turkestan and Shimkent because we don't have a good uh, road and rail connection. And they said, we are requesting this from the national government for almost 10 years. And if we are connected, then we can enjoy. But right now, we just physically close, but we, uh, uh, we cannot reach these <laughs> large uh, cities. Okay, what kind of other questions? Yes, this is about other towns. Uh, yeah, we also had a question like, what about other towns? And uh, with other towns, they also want to develop so-called agricultural industrial complex. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we did not study it, but we also did not understand why they are, uh, why, why they are so different from the, the modern towns. Uh, okay. Uh, I could maybe you reflect the question about the future of mana towns in Kazakhstan. Do you believe in the future of mana towns? Uh, I could. Okay, something with connection. Let's wait. So I myself, I do believe in future of towns. That's why maybe I'm working for the University of Central Asia which mission is to, to develop remote uh, towns located in, uh, you know, far away from large cities in mountain areas. I do believe that towns deserve uh, uh, opportunity uh, to find their own uh, development path. Uh, and I believe that uh, a lot of people would move to the towns if there are uh, sufficient living conditions. But maybe I will reflect this because I go, she's, she, she told me that she changed her mind about uh, small towns after, uh, after being part in this research. So I go, maybe you will share your ideas. Do you believe in future of small towns? Yes, sure. I totally believe because uh, I am, uh, how to say, I am really, uh, I was really urban. Uh, Liver uh, before my marriage and before our project by Mana Towns, because now uh, in my marriage by my marriage I live in uh, in the outside in the Almaty region, and uh, it was uh, this uh, two factor uh, moved my change, uh, changed my, my 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 mind about uh, region about towns about. Uh, um, Mono towns and uh, urban uh, urban towns, you see, and I see that uh, Almaty case, for example, or Nursa town cases. I mean, big cities, uh, they are they cannot include a lot of people. I mean, include by by all the sphere, it's uh, uh, by all these resources, and I believe really that we have good possibility to uh, renovate economy uh, in the mono towns, in the small towns, because uh, the, uh, we have a good human capital, social capital uh, in these small towns. And we, I mean, we all scientists or uh, not no parliament, <laughs> uh, city administration, government, we should use this possibility to make yeah. good, good future in, in the economy. There, there was also a question about uh, relocating people. In so actually, we we are against uh, of this Soviet type of top-down policy, 
We have four more natural policies, uh, which is uh, helping uh, market, uh, uh, you know, uh, market institutional development. For example, we are we do not think that uh, someone must be forcibly moved somewhere. I think we have to uh, this uh, town administration or town authorities uh, should be able to create incentives to attract young talents. Uh, for example, Aigul, uh, she moved to the region because she wants to enjoy living in a house and uh, uh, not having this noisy, <laughs> you know, streets and she enjoy uh, having a good private school nearby and etc. So if in these small towns uh, there are good conditions created for the young families, I'm sure that uh, the young talents will move there. Uh, but also, if we uh, talk about the jobs, uh, and uh, Kazakhstan want to uh, use a uh, benefit of uh, digital economy, and right now we're all in isolation, we are using it, <laughs> but we are sitting in large cities. So if we develop a good infrastructure, uh, high-speed internet and electricity supply, and these uh, town authorities create some co-working offices or spaces where uh, young people can come and uh, get a job online. Uh, I think this will be a reason. So I think there are other tools to decentralize. There are other tools to motivate young people to move back to the towns. Look, for example, this is beautiful nature. If I have this kind of view from my window, I would be happy to live in Tekali, but I need to supply with the job my husband. I need to supply my kids with a good education and uh, with good uh, social facilities. And this is something which is missing. Uh, with our family, we spent two years trying to find good apartment to buy. And at the end, we bought a, a land parcel but we couldn't use it because that land parcel, uh, because of some uh, land manipulation, was already owned by another person. So there are a lot of problems in these towns that do not allow uh, newcomers uh, to settle down. And uh, what about this, uh, you know, uh, industrialization policy and these grants, so-called grants? Uh, uh, the national government always want to have large projects, a million billion projects. Uh, but uh, I think town, they need a smaller amount of uh, money, at the same time, uh, better support, because uh, the small and medium businesses, they need support. And there can be some creative startups that are not so costly, but uh, they can have a larger outcome, they can lead to better development. For example, when I Gul interviewed one person, she said, I would like to have more facilities for kids like special uh, places where I can leave my kids or special courses uh, where they can study, uh, study from, from the, the two or three years, and then I can uh, find a job. Or people wanted to have some uh, recreational activities uh, like uh, skiing activities or some sport complexes, uh, but not large scale, you know, not this, um, an industrial type of, you know, uh, mega infrastructure. They wanted to have something tiny and nice, and it does not need a lot of money. Uh, and we believe that uh, this process of uh, grant distribution uh, must be more competitive uh, and also open and transparent. For example, a lot of local businesses, they, they cannot participate they uh, supplied uh, or for example town authorities and they wanted to be in the list of investment projects but they never achieved it because uh, the process was not transparent and the regional government uh, for example did not listen to town authorities and they made their own priorities and this is one of the problem also okay what kind of questions we have uh Ah, it's question. For, I'm not from Tekeli, so I moved back to Almaty, but uh, I'm uh, I, I'm based in Tekeli. Uh, let's say I'm traveling there at least once uh, a, a month because my work is related to uh, town development, and and, um, and our main uh, office representing Kazakhstan uh, be uh, located in Tekeli. 
Okay. Well, yes, we work with uh, with the uh, with the town administration. I actually wanted to include in one of the slides our our photo with uh, the the current uh, Akim of Tekli, <laughs> but I did not do this just in case because I I didn't ask any permission from uh, the Akim to share it. But we are in close cooperation with Akim of town, and we we know all the problems. Uh, and all the constraints they have uh, directly from the town uh, administration. Uh, even when we had this conference, uh, we tried to uh, attract the regional uh, budget to have a large touristic forum. Uh, but unfortunately, um, the last minute Taldekurgan uh, administration uh, was better, so uh, they decided to move this touristic forum from Tekeli to Taldekurgan. And, uh, and the whole idea of this, um, you know, uh, so-called Kurultai, bringing together people from different regions originated from Tekeli, that was over. <laughs> so we lost this opportunity to have touristic forum in Tekeli. Okay. I think we covered all the questions here. Yeah? Uh, uh, I think, Madina, uh, we lost some question about uh, uh, participant with government in research 8i0. I think, no, we didn't <laughs> participate uh, in this research. Uh, or I mistake? How do you think? Do you work with the, what, uh, what is the research eight I zero? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we we unfortunately we do not. Uh, the only uh, ways we collaborate with the government by uh, being partners. Or, for example, I was a part, as I said, of this mission of Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. I facilitated several uh, seminars, uh, OCD seminars in uh, Nur Sultan, uh, which was about local development. Uh, but uh, you know that uh, the local government, uh, it does not have a budget. Yeah? So of course they cannot finance research. Uh, and we try to attract funding, but uh, for these projects, we didn't have, uh, we didn't get funding. And it was uh, uh, done thanks to Aigul's uh, volunteering, her time, yeah, <laughs> my time, and the, the great support from the University of Central Asia. And I want to mention there was uh, another person involved, uh, Dinara Nurusheva, but she left uh, uh, this study because of uh, her personal reasons. And I was happy that Aigul supported me. So uh, the main source of uh, for this uh, research was human uh, capital <laughs> and also a great institutional support from the University of Central Asia. Uh, problems, of course, we faced a lot of problems. <laughs> First of all, if you want to conduct any interview in a mining town, you first have to negotiate this with the town authority and uh, so-called Tao uh, yeah, uh, the representative uh, part of the administration, because the town is small and uh, all the citizens uh, in 10 minutes, I mean, the half of the town already know that there are some two people <laughs> asking questions. And so they should be aware of this. So uh, if you want to interview uh, people living in villages or towns, get ready, uh, uh, get permission from uh, all responsible institutions, uh, make, uh, you know, polite and uh, good questions, not to uh, create any, um, let's say, uh, conflicts, because I go, she was questioning some ethnic repatriates who uh, were speaking only Kazakh. And in uh, most of the towns, uh, this, uh, uh, Kazakhs, they are not well integrated with the rest of the residents. So these uh, newcomers, they live in a separate world. And so that's why Aigul uh, had to be clever enough to know how to work with these guys. And uh, luckily we didn't have any conflicts, we didn't have any 
big challenge. There were small challenges like timing, uh, getting permission, uh, and also uh, getting opportunity to publish it. So we were lucky that our colleagues from UK invited us to join their book and hopefully you will be able to read uh, our findings uh, uh, at the part of the book chapter. So I think our time is uh, almost over. We have two minutes yeah, left. I could, do you want to add something? I think we have to thank uh, Alia oh. uh, and uh, all the uh, people uh, responsible for uh, the PhD uh, UK Kazakhstan Association, yeah. And also uh, for all people, partners uh, supporting this uh, Central Asian Forum uh, for, sustain, uh, for Sustainability Innovation. I think this is very important uh, uh, space for people to share their research uh, findings, uh, maybe to find some uh, you know, partners for future collaborations. So thank you very much, uh, girls, especially Alia, Alfia, Khalida, uh, Halida is our, already our <laughs> good friend, yeah, I go. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to thank, uh, so to say thank you all of our organization and participants uh, and listeners of our session. Thank you, Madina, to you to uh, enjoy this this project and uh, asking the question of Janar about future innovation. Um, uh, projects uh, uh, in these smaller towns. I think uh, we have uh, we, we we will see the good uh, renovation of economic uh, economy of these smaller towns uh, because uh, of uh, you, you see there are a lot of opportunity a lot of opportunity to make uh, this economy better um, uh, in accepting all of uh, industrial aspects for example it it it, it, it may be uh, tourism for example or all other thank you yeah thank you all and just for your information this is not the over of all this the project is not over <laughs> the game is not over so with i good we can we'll continue uh, to work on um, this issue and try to do uh, applied research to find out how we can help residents of Mana towns to achieve better living, uh, to achieve better quality of living. Maybe we will move to some of these towns when they are <laughs> adjusted to our needs. And you're all welcome. If you want to visit Techly, you can contact me. I will uh, share, I, I think uh, Alia is going to share, uh, she can share our presentation with people by request. And you can find at the end our contact email, so you can, uh, you know, uh, write us, and we can uh, be in touch. Okay, thank you so much. Enjoy the Sunday, uh, and good luck to all of you, despite of your location. <laughs> Bye.